how we identify as a people has always been tied to our whenua. As we take the next steps forward in our treaty settlement, Ngāti Rangitihi are seeking cultural redress in a variety of forms from the Crown. But what is cultural redress? The Crown's general approach to cultural redress is to uh, provide redress in relation to areas that are really important to a claimant group, spiritually, culturally, historically, traditionally. It's really important to start from a place where there's a shared understanding between the Crown and claimant groups on the interests that the claimant group wants to promote and protect about those important places. Properties to be returned as part of cultural redress must be Crown-owned land to be able to be included in the deed of settlement. Iwi cannot get back privately owned land. What we would desire as cultural redress is, is not what the Crown would want to provide. Um, ideally we would want all our lands back, that's without a doubt and that's what our, our iwi want. The reality is that cultural redress provides us with an opportunity to seek the return of significant um, landmarks, wahi tapu. Uh, the way we get uh, cultural redress through land is um, in, in, uh, especially in the wahi tapu area, you know, our sacred sites and all that. I mean, uh, that's a redress that we, we needed to come from from way back to just to reconnect with our land, reconnect with our river, our lakes, our, our mountain, the ocean. So for 172 years we have been disconnected from our tupuna whenua, particularly at Tarawera. And so the cultural redress allows us an opportunity to remake make those connections again that we've been missing out for so long. That disconnect strikes right to the heart of our iwi's <laughs> treaty grievances. Te mana negotiator Dalwyn Rondon has been on a personal mission for the last two decades to help her whānau rediscover our wahi tapu. Oh, if you've ever been on Mount Tarawera, the very first time that I stepped on that mountain, I would have been in my 30s. My father was 60 years old when he first stepped on top of his mountain. So it was a um, very spiritual experience. The ihi, the wehi, it was, it was very scary up there. It was a windy day, you can see for miles, but it's just an awesome place. Um, we don't have a lot of oral records, because if you're thinking 172 years, that's a lot of generations lost, so we don't have that oral cord at all coming down to us. So we're looking at um, land records, Māori land court records, um, and other, I mean, I think our historians have done a, a fantastic job. We've had two historians who've been basically doing all the research around that whole area and all of our, everything to do with our claim. That research has helped to identify that much of Ngāti Rangitihi Tipuna Whenua falls within the Department of Conservation Estate. Some of the key potential cultural redress properties included in the Agreement in Principle, or AIP, include Te Tapahoro Bay, Moura, O Manuhiri, Ngā Hereta Tūrua Kokupu, Niheta, Parts of Tarawera Awa, Base of Tarawera Maunga, known as Crater Block. Whakapau Karakia. Oniao. Te Pūwaha o Te Awa o Te Atua. Arawa Street. Kao Kao Roa. O Tara Muturangi. Te Ariki Site. The agreement in principle also includes the reclassification of part of Lake Tarawera Scenic Reserve as a historic reserve. In that area we have lots of um, burial caves, lots of tapu, wahi tapu, and we don't really want to um, identify all those particular sites, so we're actually designating our whole strip um, as being of historical significance, wahi tapu. As part of the agreement in principle, an overlay classification will be applied to the western flank of Mount Tarawera. 
An overlay classification recognises a statement of the claimant group's associations with that particular site, describes the values and principles that they have in relation to that site, and then that statement of association must be taken into account in the way the Crown manages that land. Another key feature of the cultural redress process is the statutory acknowledgement that includes outlaying Ngāti Rangitihi's historical, spiritual, cultural and traditional association with a number of sites. Parts of Lake Tarawera Scenic Reserve, Crater Block Crown Land, Rotomahana Conservation Area, Waimangu Scenic Reserve, the parts still retained by the Crown, Bregman Wildlife Management Reserve, Tarawera Cut Wildlife Management Reserve, Crown retained parts of the Old Rangitaiki Riverbed Conservation Area, Awaiti Wildlife Management Reserve, Lake Tarawera Marginal Strips, Tarawera River and its marginal strips, Tarawera River, that is, area of the Tarawera River owned by the Crown, Ashpit Road Marginal Strip, Te Kauai, Lake Rerewhakaitu Recreation Reserve, Rerewhakaitu Conservation Area, Ohine Kowal Scenic Reserve, Ohine Kowal Recreation Reserve, and Lake Tamurenui Wildlife Management Reserve. And what that does is uh, enhances the claimant group's ability to participate in certain Resource Management Act processes in relation to that site. That statement of association must be taken into account and, and fully considered in following a Resource Management Act process on that site. In addition to statutory acknowledgements, certain sites can also have a deed of recognition. If a deed of recognition is in place, then the minister responsible for the agency that manages that site has to acknowledge the statement of the group's association and then consult the claimant group in relation to that site and seek their views on specified matters from that time on. Ngāti Rangiti has both statutory acknowledgements and deeds of recognition included in their agreement in principle. Statutory areas to which deed of recognition are to apply include parts of Lake Tarawera Scenic Reserve, Crown retained parts of Crater Block Crown Land, Rotomahana Conservation Area, Crown retained parts of Waimangu Scenic Reserve, Bregman Wildlife Management Reserve, Tarawera Cut Wildlife Management Reserve, Crown retained parts of the Old Rangitaiki River Conservation Area, Awaiti Wildlife Management Reserve, and Crown owned areas of Tarawera River, which will take into account settlements with other iwi. There is also discussion taking place over some place name changes, and when those are agreed, the settlement legislation will allow those new names to be the official geographic name of the land feature. In the years that are to come, it is clear that the relationship with the Department of Conservation will be a crucial one for Ngāti Rangitihi. We need to have a relationship with, with DOC because a lot of the land they're giving back to us too is, is um, not being handed back in, in nice and pristine condition. There's uh, cats, rats, stoats, wallabies and possums all over them and uh, no, we don't want DOC to walk away and uh, leave us with the, with the bath water. So, you know, we do definitely need DOC there to um, expertise and um, financial help to, to eradicate these pests that, that, you know, are still on the land. So, no, no, they, they've got to clean it up first. We want it back how, we get, how they took it from us. For me, it's about mana. So, DOC will recognise Ngāti Rangitihi. That's quite huge. I mean, it doesn't sound very much, but it's huge. Because in the past, when Ngāti Rangitihi people have been up to our tūpuna whenua, camping and in and around those areas, DOC didn't, didn't care. They didn't care who we were, we were just another Kiwi. But our settlement enables us to form a, a legal relationship with them, an enduring relationship going forward because we have a vested interest in that scenic reserve, as do they. The land of our tipuna becoming the land of our mokopuna. Cultural redress stands to be a vital step in the future treaty settlements for Ngāti Rangitihi.